Okay, D. Uh, I'm sorry you're having so much trouble with this, but uh, we'll get through this. Uh, don't sweat it. This is, these are growing pains. Uh, okay, so here you used a paper towel. Now, uh, I don't know why you're using the modeling light from your strobe and your tungsten light when this whole course is about using strobes. Um, are they intimidating you? There's no really no reason to be intimidated because strobes are actually much smoother and easier to use than tungsten lights. It's like, it gives you a much cleaner image. Now look at this image of your paper towel. Now first of all, aesthetically, get this away from the background and line up the edge of this towel, uh, your paper towel, your roll, with the edge of the frame. To begin with, that's what looks good. And center it. Either center it or make the frame large enough so it's a little off-center if you want to get aesthetically tricky. But in this case, center it. Just keep it simple. So here, I mean, here you have a little bit of an edge lighting. You use the specular light. I like looking at your notes. Let's see, what are you saying here? Um, well, I really can't tell. I really can't tell. Uh, no matter. Uh, you, I mean, look at your notes again, and you'll recall. This is a very nice effect you've got here at the edge, um, giving the uh, object an edge lighting. Here, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing this is your key light coming from here, from the left side. But you got to get away from the background. And you see your image is warm. Um, i got to get my pointer back. Okay. Your image is warm uh, because... It's warm because um, you're using a tungsten light, basically. So your camera setting, um, your camera setting, is uh, a higher color temperature than the color temperature of your lighting. So I mean, this is something that's let's not even tackle that yet. Your strobes, in a word, your strobes will give you an image that looks more like this. See, white on white. Period. It's not going to look yellow. So that's what we're going for. Now also, you're still not formatting your image correctly, but again, first things first, you gotta start using your strobes. Uh, okay, now here, uh, this image is soft, it's not in focus. And look, it's your black is blowing out here. You gotta direct your light, and the way you direct your light onto the object only, and keep it off the background, is to use something like barn doors, or, uh, or a grid like a honeycomb, or a snoot, Something that will just direct, concentrate the light on your object. And then you decrease your exposure so that the background drops out. Look at this one. Look at the example here. See, she brought the darkness all the way up to the cup here and just lit the cup. Then we have other examples. Uh, let me go look for it right now. I should have had this. Okay, images for instruction. Let's take a look at this. I mean, I posted this in the classroom, but maybe you didn't see it. Um, okay, this camera's black on black too, okay? Uh, here's another one. Hold on a second. Um, hold on a second. Okay, hold on. Sorry about this. Look at the way this black bag is photographed against the black background. Just a slight glow on the background. That's it. So, um... Now your lighting ratios go like this. Each f-stop is twice as intense as the previous one. And so you just use your standard f-stops. F2, f4, f5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22. And as you progress upwards, each, as you measure, like f22 is four times as intense as f11. Because if you go from f11 to f16, that's twice as intense from f16 F22 is twice as intense again, so from F11 to F22 is four times as intense. So if your key light is F22 and your fill light is F11, that's a four to one ratio. See, do you get it? Now, a three to one ratio would be if uh, your uh, fill light is F11 and your key light is F16 and a half, somewhere between F16 and F22. So I hope this clarifies something for you. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Feel free to call if you have any questions. KD. All right, take care for now. I'll talk to you next time.